meeting was held at Stellenbosch with Deloitte, and they were informed by the management, which I referred to before, were all present at this meeting, on the matters and the stage of the investigation instigated by the German authorities. It was explained to Deloitte that Steinhoff has already instructed in November of, the pre of 2015 these two German independent firms to investigate each one of those allegations and that the report thereon will be available within the next couple of weeks. Later in September, Deloitte addressed a further letter to Stein of Envy, this time addressed to the chairman of the audit committee on 25 September, in which they again referred to all these allegations which concerned tax planning, non-compliance of tax planning, potential incorrect application of accounting principles specifically referenced as revenue recognition and transactions with related parties. They pointed out that they have already requested further documentations and explanations from Stein of Europe in the letter that I referred to on September 15, and that they would now require a detailed report on this matter. On the 9th of October, Mr. Boysen, in his capacity as member of the supervisory board and the chairman of the Audit and Risk Committee of Steinhoff, and I, in my capacity as CEO, replied in writing to Deloitte, pointing out that the allegations are not new and that it's an attempt by Dr. Seifert to use public prosecutors, capital market regulators, and the press to assist him in his unfounded attempts to influence the litigation with Steinhoff. We also refer to the steps taken by Steinhoff to have these allegations investigated by the independent two legal firms in terms of international financial reporting standards and international standards on auditing. On the 19th of November, the legal companies, through the coordinator, addressed a letter to Deloitte's Netherlands and dealt at length a huge document with every issue and every query raised by Deloitte. The lawyers pointed out that between December 2015 and November 2017, two years, the various professionals involved by these two legal firms have reviewed in excess of 15,000 documents all contracts and email communication between Steinhoff executives. In addition, they conducted comprehensive interviews with the management of Steinhoff companies and the parties closely aligned with Steinhoff's businesses in Stellenbosch, Westerstede, Germany, Vienna, Austria, Zurich, and Geneva, Switzerland, and they have attended a number of meetings and discussions with the Oldenburg Prosecution Office and the German tax authorities. As a result of those reviews, which took two years, interviews and discussions, they confirmed in addition to the findings described in their previous position paper that I referred to, to Deloitte, and stated categorically the following. We have not found any evidence that would cause us to conclude that the accounting for the reference transactions was not in compliance with applicable IFRS for the Stein of Europe group of companies. We have not found evidence that would cause us to conclude that counterparties to the transactions were not independent parties under applicable IFRS for the Stein of group of companies. Deloitte came back on the 23rd of November <coughs> and expressed the view that they need more information and detail from the lawyers and that they would need to do some further substantive testing on some of the transactions. But more surprisingly to us was that they were of the view that a new, brand new investigation should be started because they had queries about the independence of these 
German firms appointed by the supervisory board. In a response to the Deloitte's letter, the legal firms addressed a letter to the chairman of the audit committee on 28th November. And he referred to the meeting with Deloitte's, the Steinhoff management, all the component auditors in Amsterdam to discuss the Deloitte queries. He confirmed that the position paper was provided to Deloitte's by the lawyers with their queries. And he again pointed out that they could not find any evidence to conclude that the transactions under review were not properly accounted for by the group. On 29 November 2017, the chairman of the supervisory board, Dr. Wiesem, and the chairperson of the audit committee, Mr. Boysen, had a meeting with three representatives from Deloitte's, after which meeting I was informed that the Deloitte's decided that this additional investigation would not be necessary anymore and that the focus should now be on finalizing the 2017 audit. However, on the next day, the 30th of November, Deloitte sent a letter to the chairman of the audit committee for the attention of the supervisory board of Steinhoff, requesting that the supervisory board do commission a new independent investigation of the allegations for a firm to be appointed to be approved by Deloitte. This about turn by Deloitte was discussed at the meeting the same day, attended by Dr. Wiese, two partners of Deloitte, and the two senior partners of the legal firms in Germany that conducted the exercise. The Deloitte representative insisted on an additional independent investigation, despite what transparent, transpired excuse me, the previous day. Dr. Wiese explained that the investigation by the prosecutors in Germany and the investigation by the two firms appointed by Steinhoff has already taken more than two years to date with their findings, and that a new investigation by an independent new party would not be finalized timelessly to enable the financial statements of Steinhoff to be published. This was not acceptable to Steinhoff, as it would put the entire group at risk in the light of bank, bond, covenants, governance, and investor expectations. He indicated to them that he will have to discuss this with his supervisory board and the company's lawyers and advisors, which happened over the next two days, and that Deloitte would be informed of the decision and the way forward. I was not in South Africa at the time. I was in Europe, in Germany, and arrived back on the morning of Monday, the 4th of December. On my arrival, I discussed the developments with Dr. Wiese, and I shared his view that the further investigation at that late stage, two days before the results must be announced, will be ridiculous, and that such an investigation will in all probability delay the finalization of the 2017 financial statements indefinitely, and that would put the group in dire consequences from a cash flow, a credibility, a investor perception, and credit lenders' point of view. My personal view was that Deloitte's mandate should be terminated at that moment in time with immediate effect, and that we should appoint alternative auditors, announce the unaudited result, which was 90% complete throughout the group, as I explained to the honorable committees how that reporting took place from each of the underlying areas. And I would like to say that at that stage, I was now two years, 90% of my time as CEO, involved in daily handling these queries, concerns, and the reports by all these German investigators and lawyers that provided their reports 
And here at the late stage of that day, they wanted to start again. So my advice, and Dr. Visa agreed with that, is that we made an announcement that morning to say that the audit has not been completed, but that the unaudited results will be announced on Wednesday the 6th. And with that is what happened on that Monday. We had various consultations with our legal advisors, especially with the firm Stibber in Holland in relation to the relationship with Deloitte's. Their opinion was clear that the Deloitte's have lost their independence in this matter and was uh, not acting, uh, you know, the, 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 the real culture of the auditing is to be independent. I'm not blaming Deloitte's for anything. It was a process and I'm purely sharing facts with the honorable committees. And therefore, my advice was to appoint new auditors, announce the unaudited results, and get the audited results out by the end of January because we had time till 31 January in terms of the rules to get the audited accounts out to prevent what I believe would have been a financial disaster to the group with a decision to appoint on that day a brand new investigation after the German authorities have been investigating it for more than three years and the time and money that the group have spent on these independent German legal firms and auditors to have investigated everything. I realize that a failure by the company to release financial information on the 6th of December as a result of the auditors refusing to sign off, including allegations of accounting irregularities with a new investigation will have a disastrous effect of the, on the group. Credit lines would have been suspended. A retail group is totally reliant on its cash flow and therefore it would have had a devastating effect on the operation of the company. Investor confidence in the group would have been lost. Lenders would have lost uh, faith in the group. And my discussion with Dr. Visa and the legal advisors was that the supervisory board should announce the unaudited results replace Deloitte's at that stage with a firm that was prepared to sign off by the end of January to meet the deadline. And I made it very clear that if that is not the way the board would want to go, I don't see my way forward to go through this after I've been through it for three years of my life fighting and explaining the transactions and have received the reports. I was clear in my view, and others shared that with me, that the Deloitte's proposal at that stage in time would have had a devastating effect on the value of the shares. I did not attend the supervisory board meeting the next day and was informed late that evening that the board decided to appoint new uh, independent auditors to start an investigation totally from scratch and that my proposal was not accepted by the board. The announcement was made that the financial statements will be delayed pending a new independent investigation into the term accounting irregularities, which to me means fraud. And what happened after that announcement uh, on the 6th was that the share price, the credit lines, and the devastation happened, unfortunately. Lastly, and thank you for giving me the time to uh, give my recollection of the events that led to that uh, day in December, I want to place on record that when I left Steinhoff on the 4th of December, I was not aware of any accounting irregularity, what they refer to in the books of Steinhoff. I thank the Honorable Chairs.